Shalom, 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 brothers and sisters. Um, we are indeed entering into a new covenant. I'm going to read, start reading from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, starting at verse 31. Behold, the days come, saith the Most High, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Yasharul and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Most High. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Most High, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Most High, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Most High, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Thus saith the Most High, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinance of the moon of the stars for a light by night, which divided the sea when the waves thereof roar. The Most High of hosts is his name. In those ordinances, the part if those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Most High, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. In the beginning, when you read Genesis chapter 1, um, I think it's verse 29, it tells you that both man and beast were vegetarians. Uh, we were talking to the animals in the beginning. The language of creation is Hebrew. When Adam and Eve were expelled from the garden, everything got messed up. I learned that... <clears throat> It wasn't the Most High who told Abraham to sacrifice Isaac because the Most High is not into human sacrifice. It was actually a fallen Elohim um, that was allowed to test Abraham. And if I'm not mistaken, it was Mastema when you read the Book of Jubilees. Um, Ezekiel chapter 20. Let's go there. The Most High said that he gave us statutes that wasn't good for us because he already knew we was going to be disobedient. So animal sacrifices falls under that category where in the beginning we weren't Everybody was vegetarian. There was no need to kill animals, you know. Um, Ezekiel 20. Let me get to that. <clears throat> so we'll start from Ezekiel 20, verse 20. And hallow my Sabbaths, and they shall be a sign between me and you, that ye may know that I am the Most High, your God. Notwithstanding the children rebelled against me, they walked not in my statutes, neither kept my judgments to do them, which if a man do, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. They polluted my Sabbath. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the wilderness. Nevertheless, I withdrew my hand and wrath for my name's sake that it should not be polluted in the sight of the heathen on whose sight I brought them forth. I lifted up mine hand unto them also in the wilderness, that I would scatter them among the heathen and disperse them through the countries. This is talking about our ancestors. Mm -hmm. Because they had not executed my judgments, but had despised my statutes and had polluted my Sabbaths, and their eyes were after their father's idols. This is talking about us. Wherefore, I gave them also statutes that were not good, and judgments whereby they should not live. And I polluted them in their own gifts. And that they caused to pass through the fire 
all that opened the womb, sacrificing your children, abortions, modern day child sacrifice. That's what it is. That I might make them desolate to the end that they might know that I am the most high. Therefore, son of man, speak unto the house of Israel and say unto them, thus saith the most high. Yet in this, your fathers have blasphemed me and that they have committed a trespass against me. For when I had brought them into the land for the which I lifted up my hand to give to them, then they saw every high hill and all the thick trees and they offered there their sacrifices. And there they presented the provocation of their offering. There also they made their sweet savor and poured out their drink offerings. Then I said unto them, What is the high place where until ye go? Your churches that you go to every Sunday? Are ye polluted after the manner of your fathers? Worshiping Christ. Nobody died for your sins. Every man will die for their own sins. And commit ye whoredom after their abominations. There's nothing new under the sun. We're doing the same thing our ancestors did. For when ye offer your gifts, when ye make your sons to pass through the fire, ye pollute yourselves with all your idols, even unto this day. And shall I be inquired of you, O house of Israel, as I live, saith the Most High? I will not be inquired of by you. I don't want to hear nothing you got to say. Obey me. And that which cometh, to, cometh into your mind shall not be at all that ye say, we will be as the heathen, as the families of the countries to serve wood and stone. What, 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 how many of y'all rock a Jesus piece? How many of you are uh, Islam Muslims? as alaikum. Is that what the, the Muslims, they, they worship the stone, right? They kiss the stone, which is in the shape of a vagina. Right? Brother say, well, show me where we're not going to uh, worship or do any more animal sacrifices. So let's go to Isaiah chapter 1. This is right now prophecy. See, this stuff didn't happen years ago like the churches try to get you to think it did because their 501c3 government owned and operated they get perks from the government so they have to tell you what the government tells them to tell you there's no separation between church and state isaiah chapter 1 verse 12 when ye come to appear before me who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination. You sage in your house, you burning incense. It's an abomination. And to the most high. The new moons and the Sabbaths. The calling of assemblies. All of this, y'all getting dressed up and you're blowing the bullhorn and you're doing... The most I don't want all that. He wants you to obey him. It don't take all that. The calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity. Even your solemn meetings. Your new moons and your appointed feasts. My soul hateth. I hate it. Obey me, saith the most high. That's all I Obey me. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. I'm weary. I created these animals. I created you. They, all, they come from the dust of the ground just like, I don't want you killing these animals. But I gave you statutes that wasn't good for you. Because you're so hard-headed. Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Most High. 
Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, you should eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword. <laughs> For the mouth of the Most High has spoken it. His word is crystal clear. Got people out here. <clears throat> well, everybody mixed because everybody got raped and did. Hey, that's a lie. It's a lie. The Most High said, no mixing. Period. So we're going to go to the book of Ezra. Chapter 10, verse 3. And you know why the Most High say don't mix? Because everybody's not human. Hue is spelled H-U-E-M-A-N. To have a hue means you have a, a tint, a shade. The Most High created us from the dust of the ground. I haven't seen a white or pale dust ever, unless it was manipulated, bleached. Did not everything come from darkness, right? Right. So the reason he tells us not to mix with the other nations is because they're not human. They are the seed of the fallen Elohim. Remember Genesis 6? Where the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were fair and took all whom they chose. Right. And so then they bear giants in the earth. Is not to turn the skin from brown to white a curse? Did not Noah curse Canaan because Ham slept with Noah's wife? Right? To uncover a man's nakedness is to sleep with his wife. So we are not to mix with these other nations because they're not human. They're seeds of the fallen angels. They grow tails, some of them. They've called us monkeys all these years, but they're the ones with monkey DNA. It's been proven. They're not human. They're mankind. They kind of like man. So they say, well, you are what your father is. No, that's a lie. Scripture says otherwise. The book of Ezra chapter 10, verse 3. Now, therefore, let us make a covenant with the Most High to put away all the wives and such as are born of them, according to the counsel of the... Actually, let's go back to, um, to verse 2. We can even start at verse 1. Ezra chapter 10, verse 1. Now, when Ezra had prayed and when he had confessed, weeping and casting himself down before the house of the Most High... There assembled unto him out of Israel a very great congregation of men and women and children, for the people wept very sore. And Shekinah, the son of Jehiel, one of the sons of Elam, answered unto Ezra, We have trespassed against our God and have taken strange wives of the people of the land. Yet now there is hope in Israel concerning this thing. Now, therefore, let us make a covenant with the Most High to put away all the wives and such as are born to them according to the counsel of my Lord and of those that tremble at the commandment of the Most High and let it be done according to the law. Arise, for this matter belongeth unto thee. We also will be with thee. Be of good courage and do it. Then arose Ezra and made the chief priests, the Levites, and all Israel to swear that they should do according to this word. And they swear. Then Ezra, arose, then Ezra rose up from before the house of the Most High and went into the chamber of Joh Johanan, the son of Eliezer. And when he came thither, he did eat no bread nor drink water, for he mourned because of the transgression of them that had been carried away. And they made proclamation throughout Judah and Jerusalem unto all the children of the captivity that they should gather themselves together into Jerusalem and that whosoever would not come within three days According to the counsel of the princes and the elders, all his substance should be forfeited and himself separated from the congregation of those that had been carried away. 
So you're not going to do what you want to do. You camps and you brothers uh, trying to justify sleeping with these women of other nations, you're going to be cut off. You ain't going to be able to enter the assembly of the Most High. You're not going to do what you want to do. It's not your show. The Most High, he creates the good and the evil. So guess what? He has all power in his hands. That's why he can never be defeated. He created it. All, screen, all sin is ascribed to Azazel, not Eve. When you read the book of Enoch, the Most High said, let us make man in our image and our likeness. Who do you think he was talking to? He was talking to his Elohim. He's not the Elohim. He's the Most High. So he told the Elohim, let's make man in our own image and our likeness. And that's who he was talking to. And so that's why Genesis 6 says that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men, why would it distinguish the daughters of men? Why would it say that? Because these were entities that were not man. They were not created from the dust of the ground. And we'll get to that. I'm going to show you guys that Cain and Abel were seeds of the fallen Elohim that both Adam and Eve had sex with an angel. You've had heard of the reptilian shapeshifters that have the ability to shapeshift into anything they want. They could become human. They could be animal, whatever. These things were with the Most High. So they have some of his knowledge, but they don't have it all. The Most High tells us in the book of Isaiah chapter 48 that he hasn't told us everything because if he did, we would have already said that we knew it. So he's constantly creating. He's constantly staying ahead of the game. And for those of you who think that space really exists and, you know, NASA is real, nobody has been into space because heaven is the throne of the most high. Earth is his footstool. We're going to start at Isaiah 66, chapter 1. Thus saith the Most High, the heaven is my throne, and earth <laughs> is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me, and where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Most High. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor, and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. No more animal sacrifices. Here we go. Isaiah 66, verse 3. This is the new covenant, remember? He that killeth an ox is as if he slew a man. He that sacrifices a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offereth an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delighteth in their abomination. And so what is the Most High going to do? I also will choose their delusions, and will bring their fears upon them, because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear, but they did evil before my eyes, and chose that in which I delighteth not. Hear the word of the Most High, ye that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hateth you, it's a lot of y'all out there that hate me, but I don't care. Your brethren that hateth you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, let the Lord be glorified. But he shall, shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. A voice of noise from the city, a voice from the temple, a voice of the Lord that rendeth recompense to his enemies. Before she travaileth, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. Who hath heard such a thing? Who hath seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travaileth, she brought forth her child. It will be, it's not going to be like the brother Juan, my husband. Y'all keep him in your prayers. 
he would say, man, when we get to Zion, we're just going to be able to drop a seed in the ground and it's going to spring up the next day. And this is what the scripture saying. Who hath heard such a thing? Verse 8, Isaiah 66. Who have seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Oh, yes. We ain't going to be waiting two and three months for crops to grow. We're going back home to Zion. The Amazon rainforest is the Garden of Eden. Don't no man have to plant seed in the Amazon rainforest? Everything grows on its own. Nobody has to till the ground, remember? In the book of Genesis, was not the Garden of Eden a place where man didn't have to till the ground? Huh? But that's the Amazon rainforest where you have every fruit, chocolate even grows or even is produced in the Amazon rainforest, man. Zion is Peru, Cusco, the center of the navel of the earth, Jubilee chapter 8. Let's go to Genesis chapter 5 so I can show you who Adam's firstborn child was. It wasn't Cain and Abel. Excuse me, my internet's moving kind of slow. But I feel good. And I hope that you guys are listening. And I hope that you're packing your bags and getting the hell out of Babylon. Because it is falling. The sword is on the land. These demons have the ability to manipulate everything. They can manipulate the weather. Yes, they can. They can do it. And so they're going to destroy America. The Most High has given them the authority to because you're so hard-headed, Negroes. You want to do what the hell you want to do. So, hey, destruction is coming to you. Genesis chapter 5. Seth is Adam's firstborn, not Cain and Abel. This is the book of the generations of Adam in the day that the Most High created man. In the likeness of the Most High made he him. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in that day when they were created. And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness and after his image and called his name Seth. And the days of Adam after he had begotten Seth were 800 years. And he begot sons and daughters. And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years and he died. And Seth lived 105 years and begot Enos. And Seth lived after he begot Enos 807 days and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Seth were 912 years and he died. And Enos lived 90 years and begot Canaan. And Enos lived after he begot Canaan and 815 years and begot sons and daughters, and all the days of Enos were 905 years, and he died. So <clears throat> if Cain and Abel were the seed of, the, of, of um, Adam and Eve, why isn't their genealogy mentioned? Why does the lineage of Adam and Eve start with the genealogy of Seth? Don't get me wrong. The Most High did accept Abel's gift because... You know, he did a righteous deed. And so to all of the pale people out there, to all the white people, if you do good, good will come to you. The Most High uh, may save you because Isaiah 61 verses 5 through 6 says the sons of the alien will serve the Negro. So some of you will live to serve us. Do good and good will come to you. All of the white people not going to die but the majority of you will. And all the wicked of my people will die. It says two-thirds of my people. That's a lot. Only a remnant. A remnant is a small amount of people. Look at Noah. Noah was the only one who built the ark. One man out of the whole earth was righteous. The Most High shown favor to his family because of Noah. You see that all the time where the Most High would give favor to uh, family members of people just because of one right because of that person look at uh, oh 
Yeah, I mean, with, even with Sodom and Gomorrah, which Sodom and Gomorrah is Salt Lake City, Utah. The Salt Lake. The scriptures took place in, 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 um, in the Americas, brothers and sisters. So Salt Lake City, Utah is Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham asked the angels, hey, man, if it's just these many people, that's righteous. Is it? If it's one man that's righteous, then the Most High saw fit for one man and gave favors to, to his daughters to save them. Well, actually to his whole family, his wife and his daughters. But his wife turned back. She didn't want to leave Sodom and Gomorrah. She would rather have the world than the Most High. And so she was turned into a pillar of salt. It's still there to this day. So... Um, it was something else I wanted to mention. But just know we've been utterly deceived. I'm going to show you guys who the son of the Most High is. It's not Jesus. Nobody died for your sins. You're going to die for your own. That's why we're going through what we're going through. If somebody had died for our sins, wouldn't the world be a better place? I mean, come on. Niggas is getting gunned down every day. This is judgment. Brothers say, well, are we going to all have to stand before the Lord for judgment? This is judgment. That New Testament got your head all screwed up. Blind to the facts. So let's go to Exodus 4 and 22. Actually, we'll go to Exodus 4. Twenty-one. Exodus 4 and 21. And the Most High said unto Moses, When thou goest to return into Egypt, see that thou do all those wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thine hand. But I will harden his heart, and he shall not let the people go. Barak is the modern-day Pharaoh. His mom is pale. His dad is African. He's not Negro. Negroes aren't African. So he has... Gentile blood running through his veins and African blood running through his veins. Psalm 83 says all nations are confederate against thee, including the Africans, because the Negro is not African. You can go into any African braid shop or any African store and they look at you like, nigga, nigga, please. Right? They're not us. We're not them. Okay, so... The Most High telling Moses, tell um, Pharaoh to let my people go. The Most High say he going to harden his heart. The Most High creates the good and the evil. He did it on purpose to destroy Pharaoh. He hardened his heart. And so verse 22 says, and thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, thus saith the Most High, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Who is Israel? Israel started off as one man, but then Israel turned into 12 nations. Israel is a people, not one man, and it's not a land. Okay? So we are the son of the Most High. The Most High uses the masculine to describe things. As you've seen when we was reading in Genesis chapter 5, how he described Adam and Eve. He called them Adam. I'm going to show you guys too, because <laughs> the Most High warned us about Jesus in Isaiah 51. This is why we have to study to show ourselves approved so that we can live, so that we won't be deceived, especially you ladies out there. You want a man so bad. Don't you know that scripture says man will surely deceive you? The heart is wicked, man. These niggas around here controlling you with the script, with a, a book. Something that the Most High didn't even inspire. The Most High didn't inspire the New Testament. He says there's nothing new under the sun. But you want a man so bad. Why? Make the Most High your foundation. And then he will send you the man that you need and he may even send you some men you don't need just to test your faith. He's going to continue to test us. Isaiah 51. Let me show you how the Most High warned us about Jesus. Isaiah 51 and 11. 
Therefore, the redeemed of the Most High shall return and come. I'm sorry. Let's start at verse 12. I, even I am he that comforted you. Who art thou that thou shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die? And the son of a man which shall be made as grass. And forgettest the Lord thy maker that have stretched forth the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth and have feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor as if he were ready to destroy. And where is the fury of the oppressor? The captive exile hasteneth that he may be loosened and that he should not die in the pit, nor that his bread should fail. But I am the Lord thy God that divided the sea whose waves roared, the Lord of hosts is his name. So why would you be afraid of a man that shall die and the son of a man that shall be made as grass and forget it, the Lord God, your maker? Mm -hmm. We've been utterly deceived. I'm going to show you who the descendants of Abraham are, they started out Negro, full-blooded, and they still Negro, full-blooded, no mixing. The Most High preserved the remnant. He's not a man that he shall lie, nor the son of man that he has to repent. What did the Most High tell Abraham? So for all of you who's promoting that these other nations are Yasha rule, it's a lie. Genesis chapter 15 and verse 13. I apologize, my internet is moving slow. Here we go. We'll start from verse 12. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell on Abram. And lo, in horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. Has pale Mexicans or pale Puerto Ricans or white people or Russians or Germans or pale Cubans, have they been in bondage for 400 years? Where is that in history? Where is it? It's the Negro. We're the apple of the Most High's eye. We've always been. He loves us. And he's calling us back. He's calling us to repent. Turn away from our abominations. And come back to him. Psalms 83 say all nations are confederate against thee. Everybody know who you is except you. I'm going to read it and show you what they did to us, how they conspired against us. Every nation on earth know who you are. That's why they come to your hoods and they set up monopolies and they take everything you work so hard for. It's all vanity anyway. But you give it to them every, every paycheck. You at the liquor store. You at the mall. You at the African hair braiding shop. You uh, at the clubs, you in the churches, <laughs> they robbing, robbers and thieves. Psalm 83, mm -hmm. keep not thy silence, O God, hold not thy peace and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult and they that hate thee have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come 
and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may no more be in remembrance. <laughs> For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. The tabernacles of and the Ishmaelites of Moab. And the Hagarines, Gabal, and Ammon, and Amalek, and the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre are sure also is joined with them. They have hope in the children of Lot, Selah. Do unto them as unto the Midianites, as to Sisera, as to Jaban, at the brook of Kishon, which perished at Endor, they became as dung for the earth. Make their nobles like Oreb and like Zeb, yea all their princes of Zeba and as Zalmunna who said, let us take to ourselves the houses of God in possession. Oh my God, make them like a will as the stubble before the wind as the fire burneth the wood and as the flame setteth the mountains on fire. So persecute them with thy tempest and make them afraid with thy storm. Fill their faces with shame that they may seek thy name, O Lord. Let them be confounded and troubled forever. Yea, let them be put to shame and perish. That men may know that thou whose name alone is the most high, art the most high over all the earth. So the most high himself allowed this to happen to us. Because we wanted to be like the other nations. We wanted a king. We wanted a man to rule over us who wasn't satisfied with the Most High being our king. We wanted to uh, do what we wanted to do. And we just didn't want to be righteous, you know, just what the Most High said and how he created everything it's like you know man nah, nah you don't know best most high okay i'm gonna do what i want to do <clears throat> and so he said okay do what you want to do i'm gonna remove myself i'm gonna remove my name and i'm gonna let them do what they want to do you want to do what you want to do and they're gonna do what they want to do i'm not gonna protect you because the battle is not ours it's the most highs I'm trying to go to Jeremiah chapter 1. So that I can end with this. And, um, and let you know how the Most High feels about his Negroes. He loves us. But he's not dealing with any more disobedience. He's going to destroy the wicked. You're going to die. So, you know, repent, turn away. You have an opportunity to save yourself. You don't have to die in America. You don't have to die from these storms. The troops are on the ground. All of this stuff is happening because the Most High said he was going to destroy Babylon. That'll be the last thing I end with so you can see that. And he's telling us to flee out of the midst of Babylon so you don't have to partake of her iniquity. But niggas are like, no, I'm going to stay and fight. You can't fight the devil, man. You got a little, you know, you got your little Glock or your little AK. Man, these niggas got tanks. Like, have you heard of DARPA? D-A-A-R-P-A? -A -A? They're creating machinery in the form of animals and all kinds. They can run through woods with guns in them and they're going to track you down. You can't run from the devil. In America, the Most High has turned it over. He says, become a haven of demons. So why would you want to be around that? Why would you want to be in the mist? I don't know. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 4. Then the word of the Most High came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Most High said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Most High. Then the Most High put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Most High said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down. 
and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant. Moreover, the word of the Most High came unto me saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Then said the Most High unto me, thou hast well seen, for I have hasted my word to perform it. And the word of the Most High came unto me the second time saying, what seest thou? And I said, I see a seething pot, and the face thereof is toward the north, North America. Then the Lord said unto me, out of the north an evil shall break forth upon all the inhabitants of the land. For lo, I will call all the families of the kingdoms of the north, saith the Most High, and they shall come and they shall set every one his throne at the entering of the gates of Jerusalem and against all the walls thereof round about and against all the cities of Judah. Everywhere y'all stay. We're Judah. They took us from South America. That's where they took us from. That's where Christopher Columbus, they took us from South America and just took us to North America. That's where the northern tribes were. North America, northern kingdom, South America, southern kingdom. And I will utter my judgments against them, touching all their wickedness. This is Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 16. And I will utter my judgments against them, touching all their wickedness. So the Most High is saying he's sending judgment to the north, and he's sending the, 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 the armies from the north. Where's Russia? Huh? Who, who, what troops are on the ground? The NATO troops? Russia? China? Okay. Verse 17, thou therefore gird up thy loins and arise and speak unto them all that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. I have to tell you these things or the most high will kill me. Before he knew me, before he formed me in the womb, he knew me. I have to tell the truth and shame the devil. For behold, I have made thee this day a defense city and an iron pillar and brazen walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, and against the people of the land. And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee, saith the Most High, to deliver thee. I can't be afraid to tell the whole truth and shame the devil. The Most High is pleading with his people. What um, scripture is that, sis, about um, flee out of the midst of Babylon? That's Jeremiah 31. This will be the last scripture, brothers and sisters. I advise you to get into the word yourself. Um, while we're looking for that, let me show you who the Most High is. What is that, Jeremiah? That's Jeremiah 3. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> So I'm going to show you who the Most High is because he's not a man. He's a spirit. That's why we have to worship him in spirit and truth. Isaiah chapter 11. Okay. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of the Most High shall rest upon him. This is what the spirit of the Most High is. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge, and the fear of the Most High. That's what the spirit of the Most High is. Isaiah 11 and 2, that's the spirit of the Most High. And so this is Jeremiah. We say Jeremiah 3. Mm-hmm. What verses? Um... Well, you can start from 14. And okay. Then, yeah. And so this is um the most high telling you to flee. Is it 14? You can start from 14 or you can start from... Okay. Where is Babylon in here? Um, well, that's uh, chapter 4, verse 5. Okay, let's go to 4. So we're going to do Jeremiah 4. But you should read the whole book of Jeremiah because the book of Jeremiah, the book of Isaiah, that's what's happening now. It didn't happen years ago. It's happening right now. It's a right now word. It's right now prophecy. So, 
excuse me, my internet is moving slow. Okay. And what verses? Uh, four. Verse five. Mm -hmm. Give me start at the beginning. Yeah, I don't see um I don't see Babylon, the word Babylon. What script what chapter was the word Babylon in? Give me one second, brothers and sisters, because I got to get this for you. I'm sorry. I should have had everything together for you so that we can bring it forth. Um, but I appreciate your patience. And um, again, I hope that you are uh, paying attention. So Jeremiah 50. <clears throat> and 28 and Jeremiah 51 and 6. We're going to go there. And Jeremiah 50. So right now, word, brothers and sisters. Right now, the Most High is saying to get out of Babylon. Leave the land of the north. The land that you've been a stranger in the land that you were taken into. You didn't come from Africa. They didn't bring us from Africa on no slave ships. Didn't Martin Luther King say the Negro is in exile in his own land? Even he knew the truth. So we're at Jeremiah 50 and 15. Actually, let's um, do, go do 50 and 13. Because of the wrath of the Most High, it shall not be inhabited, but it shall be wholly desolated, desolate. Even one that goeth by Babylon shall be astonished and hiss at all her plagues. Put yourselves in array against Babylon round about, all ye that bend the bolt. Shoot at her, spare no arrows, for she has sinned against the Most High. Shout against her round about. She hath given her hand, her foundations are falling, her walls are thrown down. For it is the vengeance of the Most High. Take vengeance upon her, as she have done, so do unto her. Cut off the sword from Babylon, and him that handleth the sickle and thine in the time of harvest. For fear of the oppressing sword, they shall turn every one to his people, and they shall flee every one to his own land. Israel is a scattered sheep, and lions have driven him away. First, the king of Assyria hath devoured him. And last, this Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, hath broken his bones. Damn, is that saying that uh, Barak is Nebuchadnezzar? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, thus saith the Most High of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will punish the king of Babylon. Who's the king of Babylon? Barak gonna get his. And his land, as I have punished the king of Assyria. Assyria is North America. The northern tribes were taken from North America into Africa. That's how our ancestors, that's how Negroes, Hebrews get into Africa. The Assyrian king took them into Africa. And then it said that they consulted among each other in 2 Ezra, this is the Apocrypha, which the Roman Catholic Church took the Apocrypha out of the Old Testament to keep us blind even more. All nations are confederate against thee. So it says that our ancestors consulted that, and, and they decided to go into a further country. It took them a year and a half to walk there. When you walk from Africa to Europe, it's about a year and a half walk. Europe is Arzareth. It's not America. We've always been here. Negro is aboriginal to America. Adam and Eve were created in the Amazon rainforest, the real Garden of Eden. Also, the forest of Lebanon. <laughs> Ezekiel 20. 
Most I told Ezekiel, prophesy to the forest of the south. Ain't we going to South America? Mm -hmm. We walk into Zion. Get you another scripture about Babylon. <clears throat> Getting out. Oh, same, same chapter, 50 and 28. The voice of them that flee and escape out of the land of Babylon. Oh, let, let's go back. Let's go back. Okay, this is Jeremiah 50. We can start at 26. I could have just read the whole chapter. The Most High is telling our enemies this. Come against her from the utmost border. Open her storehouses. Cast her up as heaps and destroy her utterly. Let nothing of her be left. Slay all her bullocks. Let them go down to the slaughter. Woe unto them, for their day is come, the time of their visitation. The brothers say, well, aren't we going to have to have a day when we all stand? Hey, this is judgment right now. The voice of them that flee and escape out of the land of Babylon to declare in Zion the vengeance of the Lord our God, the vengeance of his temple. Call together the archers against Babylon. All ye that bend the bow camp against it round about, let none thereof escape. Recompense her according to her work, according to all that she have done, do unto her. For she hath been proud against the Most High, against the Holy One of Israel. Therefore, her young men shall fall in the streets. What's happening to our brothers? Hmm? And all her men of war shall be cut off in that day, saith the Most High. You can't fight these demons. The Most High say the battle is not ours. It was the governments of America. America that did this to us. He's saying move out the way because I'm sending destruction to America. Those pale races there, you know what they did to our ancestors? They would tie to get the, the, the slaves to submit. These white people, they would tie. They would get the strongest man in the, um, of the slaves, and they would tie one arm and one leg to one horse, the other arm, the other leg to another horse, and they would make the horses they would make them go in separate directions and, and rip our brothers apart. They would get the strongest man of the slaves and these white devils would fuck them up the ass. And you think that uh, we all got to get along and that you're not gonna pay for what you did to my people? You're gonna pay. You're still sitting here reaping the benefits of what your ancestors did to my people. Genesis 15 told you who the seed of Abraham is. His seed would be in bondage for 400 years, but after that, the Most High would deliver us along with our substance. All of the gold and silver that you stole from us, you're gonna bring it back. You're going to give it back. And then you're going to bow down and serve us. So all of y'all not going to die. You're going to serve us. I'm in Punta Gorda, Belize. The Most High has made provision here. If you don't have a passport, get a passport and get the hell out of Babylon. It's nothing there for you. MTV was playing commercials of them coming into your house, kicking in your door, dragging you out of your house and throwing you into the back of a paddy wagon and going from house to house to house. Hey, these troops that are on the ground, they don't speak English. You're not going to be able to plead with them. They're coming to kill you. They're coming to put you in complete submission to the new world order. The Most High said he was going to give Satan a short time to rule. Satan is a man. The man of sin is Barack Obama himself. I voted the devil into my first time ever voting. I'm in Dublin, Ireland. 
the whole world was so excited. I'm I'm at a big theater in Dublin and we're just watching the elections and yay Barack oh man. But Mark Malcolm X said he said when you see a black man get into the White House, you better know that uh the world is done. It's over. Even Malcolm X knew. I wanted to end this, but the most I say, no, keep talking. Keep showing them my word. Keep showing them the truth. So we're going to go to the book of Daniel, chapter 11. I'm going to show you that Michelle Obama is a man. See, a lot of these rap stars and celebrities, they're transgender. Serena and Venus, they're men. And so this is modern day witchcraft where you have the men attracted to men disguised as women. You have the women attracted to women disguised as men. And so now everybody gay. Everybody want to sleep with the same sex. They don't, you don't understand why you attracted to a, a woman and you're a woman and you ain't never had. That's why. Because some of these men that you're attracted to, ladies, are really women. I've been in the lifestyle. I know what goes on. The Most High said, search for me like hidden treasure and I will, you will find me. I will show you the secret things. And so he has shown me many secrets. And he has allowed me to go through these things to bear witness to you today. So I'm at the book of Daniel chapter 11 <clears throat> to show you that Michelle is a, is a man and that Barack is... He don't have no desire for a woman. He is. Uh, he is the last king. <clears throat> My goodness. Okay. So we at Daniel chapter 11. We'll start at um, verse 34. Now when they shall fall, they shall be hoping with a little help, but many shall cleave to them with flatteries. And some of them of understanding shall fall, to try them and to purge and to make them white, even to the time of the end, because it is yet for a time appointed. And the king shall do according to all his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every God. And shall speak marvelous things against the most high of gods. And shall prosper to the indignation be accomplished for that that is determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers nor the desire of women. Nor regard any God for he shall magnify himself above all. But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces. Huh? The most uh, Barack, he loves war. He love he 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 he's a he's the devil. He's Satan. He's the man. But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces, and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange God, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory. And he shall cause them to rule over many and shall divide the land for gain. Have not they divided America into sections through FEMA? Have y'all seen that? You got zone one, zone two, zone three. This has been going on, brothers and sisters. This is Barack right here in the scriptures. And at that time of the end shall the king of the south push at him. What's going on with uh, South America and war, warring against North America? And the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships. And he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over. What's going on with Russia and China? Do not they come from the north? He shall enter also into the glorious land and many countries shall be overthrown, but these shall escape out of his hand. Even Edom and Moab and the chief of the children of Ammon. Moab and Ammon are the descendants of Lot. 
both Lot's daughters slept with him. They got him drunk and had sex with their father. And so these are the descendants of Lot. Edom, Esau, is Jacob's twin brother, still Negro. How do I know? Because we just had a female in our house here in Punta Gorda, Belize. She grows a full beard. The daughters of Zion don't grow beards. I'm sorry. She's Esau, still Negro, pecan, tan, and everything. Same color as me, brown girl. He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries and the land of Egypt shall not escape. Egypt is America, the land of our bondage. Niggas have never been in slavery in Africa. We didn't come from Africa. The Negro is an exile in his own land, Martin Luther King. Genesis 15, 13, descendants of Abraham, they're going to be in bondage for 400 years. Where were we in bondage at, brothers and sisters? Was it in Africa or was it North America? Oh, okay. But he shall have power over the treasures of gold and of silver and over all precious things of Egypt. Barak is taking all of your money, the, your bank accounts and your, your 401k. All of that belongs to Barak, man. So I advise you to cash out and get the hell out of Babylon, Egypt, Assyria. You still have cities called Syria, Babylon, and Damascus in New York today. The city of Edom is in Texas. Ephraim, the city of Ephraim is in Utah. The real Jordan River is in Utah. Jericho and Moab, Utah. Mount Nebo, where Moses is buried, Utah. Moses was not allowed to enter the promised land because he smote the rock instead of speaking to it, taking the glory away from the Most High. Obedience is better than sacrifice. But he shall have power over the treasures of gold and of silver and over the, all the precious things of Egypt and the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. What did he do to Gaddafi? I heard Gaddafi's still alive. All, you know, they into the cloning and deception. These are demons that run the government. Demons run the world. It's not the world given into the hand of the wicked. That has not stopped. But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Therefore, he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to make away many. And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end and none shall help him. Barak, you're going to die. A terrible death. Because you're in collusion too. Destroying my people. You look like me, but you're not me. And so this is why we have to try the spirit by the spirit. I have been dealing with nothing but demons. My own husband is possessed by demons. Before I came here, my brother said to me, I love you, Pop. He said, Shonda, when you go to Belize, the most high said, he said, God said, that you're going to have to fight demons. But God said that you're going to have the power to order death. The Most High has given me the power to tread the serpent. And all of you brothers and sisters out there, you can tap into the same power. But it only comes through obedience. The Most High is not going to share his power with you being disobedient to him. How can, how, how can you even operate the power if you're not following the manual, right? Come to Belize. Save yourself. You're trying to hold on to this paper money that soon you'll be wiping your ass with it. Don't you remember the Great Depression in 1949? The people were just burning the money in the streets. The dollar is dead. In California right now, you can't even pay your mortgage with cash. 
The dollar's dead. It's no good. It's no good. Get your passports. Come here. Every dollar here is $2. You don't really need much money here because we're getting ready to go back to the beginning. See, we come from nature. We're getting ready to go into the Amazon rainforest, the real Garden of Eden. We're going to walk to Zion. We will be protected. The Most High said he's going to protect us in the wilderness. What scripture is that? Let me get that so I can show you guys. And so while he's destroying the world around us, he'll be pleading with us face to face in the wilderness. Well, he said he, he, he will protect us. Bear with me, brothers and sisters. I love you guys. I had to save myself. And I'm pleading with you. The Most High is pleading with you. Jeremiah 31. I love the Most High. His word is true. His word is true. But we're going to walk. To Peru. It's going to be a three, four year walk. However long the Most High say it don't even matter. And the reason why we have to go through the Amazon rainforest is because the Most High gave us dominion over everything. So we have to learn how not to be afraid of the anacondas and the bears and the lions. And he's going to restore a pure language so we can all call on him with one consent. We will speak with the animals again like we did in the beginning. We have to conquer those fears. We have to be purged still. Just because you come to Belize, it don't mean you're going to make it to Zion. You may die in the jungle. Obedience is better than sacrifice. So the Most High will still try us and test us. Until we make it. Nothing, he, you know, one day with the most highs is a thousand years for us. So nothing happens overnight in real, in, in earth's time. It's a process. So I'm at Jeremiah 31 to show you why we need to come to the wilderness. Because we will be protected. We're going to find grace with the most high in the wilderness. While he's destroying the world judging for the brothers and sisters that are in other countries and you cannot make it here scripture says that the ships of Tarshish is going to bring you here along with our gold and silver Tarshish is a son of Japheth Japheth is the Isles of the Gentiles so what ship has the capacity to bring people Along with gold and silver. What ships out there that you know of? Wouldn't it be our modern day cruise ships? Huh? Oh yes. Scriptures say they're going to be carrying you on their backs. They're going to serve us. I'm in Jeremiah chapter 31. At the time, saith the Most High, will I be the God of all the families of Israel. And they shall be my people. Thus saith the Most High, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness. Even Israel, when I went to cause him to rest. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. I'm drawing you. I'm drawing my niggas. Come to the Most High. He's here. He's here waiting on you. Again, I will build thee, and thou shalt be built, O virgin of Israel. Thou shalt again be adorned with thy tabrets, and shalt go forth in the dances of them that make merry. Thou shalt yet plant vines upon the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant, and shall eat them as common things. For there shall be a day that the watchmen upon Mount Ephraim, Mount Ephraim is in Vermont, USA, 
For there shall be a day that the watchmen upon the Mount Ephraim shall say, shall cry, Arise ye and let us go up to Zion and to the Lord our God, the Most High. Zion, center of the navel of the earth, Cusco, Peru. Yeah, all kind of wickedness goes on there. And so that's why. We get there. Eyes have not seen nor have ears heard what the Most High has in store for us. We have no idea how important we are to the Most High. We are the apple of his eye. He said it is us that are the light of the world. It was never Jesus. The first thing the Most High created was light. He said let there be light. It didn't say nothing about the sun and moon till later on in Genesis. So who's the light? Who, what was the light that he created in the beginning? Was it not us? I think so. And so this is why we're the royal priesthood. This is why we have to walk according to the word of the Most High. He's created us to be the light of the world. Everybody want to be us. And we've been brought down to nothing. We've been stripped of everything, but all nations still want to be us. They, they want to act like us. They, they, they want to talk like us. They want to dress like us. Right? Come to Belize. All the little money you got, get your passport. It cost me 400 bucks to get here. I booked a flight from Florida to Belize City and from Belize City to Punta Gorda. That's the cheapest way to come. To try to book a flight from the state straight to Punta Gorda, you're going to pay twice as much. Scripture says that many men are getting ready to die. That it's going to be left seven women to one man. I'm not expecting a lot of brothers to come. And from the word of the Most High, it don't seem like he's expecting a lot of brothers either. Seven women to one man is his word, Isaiah chapter 4. Not mine. I'm just the messenger. <sighs> I love you guys. Um, the sword is upon the land in North America. For the ones that don't die from these storms, the troops are on the ground to receive you and they will take you to the FEMA camps. And when you get to the FEMA camps, they will chip you. If you refuse to be chipped, they have gas railroad cars that they will gas you. And the bottom of the cars have drop doors so all they have to do is open the door and they will drop your bodies down into these huge caskets that they've created that can fit about 10 bodies and you'll be dead why go through that why why partake of babylon's iniquity you didn't do this they did and so they're going to pay, but they've set these FEMA camps up for us because these demons want to take as many of us out as possible. They know that the time is done. They know it's done. So they're going to take out as many as, of us with them as they can. Brothers and sisters. The FEMA camps are real, man. Y'all seen them bringing in the military vehicles. They're militarizing the police. Right where I'm from. Why, why y'all drive around in tanks? And you the police station. What what a regular cars at that y'all used to drive in? Why y'all carrying these big ass bazookas in the hood for? What? Ain't no more thirty eights on the waist, you know? Like what, what y'all planning for? What are you? You know that this is seventy A.D. This is the new. This is their New Testament. It's nothing new under the sun. They are playing out their own uh, scripture. Or word. The book of Revelation talks about the beheadings. How many people was going to be beheaded. Don't you know Barak ordered 20,000 guillotines to chop off your head with? Did you know that? Barak is related to all of the presidents. They're all related by blood. His mother is white. So those are his cousins. What better way to deceive the Negro than to put someone in office that looks like them? They deceived us, man. 
You can you can tell by the fruit of his labor. Look, Barat don't do nothing for us. He ain't stopping this. He's contributing to it. He's preparing. He's the modern day Pharaoh. He hates you. He's an African Hamite. You're Shem, brothers and sisters. We come from the line of Shem. Shem is Melchizedek, the high priest. And this is why we are the royal priesthood. We get it from my forefather. It is what it is. And the Most High wants you to save yourself. Nobody's going to come in the sky and pick you up on a chariot. You're going to die there if you don't leave that place. Or you will be forced into slavery. Because once they chip you and put you into the FEMA camps, if you have any kind of debt, you got to work that off. Me, I got about $75,000 worth of debt. Student loans. and did. Hey, y'all come holler at me in Peru, you know, if you want to see me. But they don't want to see me. They don't want to see the most high about me. And so once you come here, brothers and sisters, they're not going to want to see the most high about you either. Because the most high say he will protect us. So he's gathering us in one place so he can protect us. It's the same thing they did to us. They put us in these projects and they put us in these gated communities. It makes it easier for the roundup. They, they created cities so that the roundup would be easier. They, they made us not want to live in the countries anymore. Oh, come live in a gated community in the suburbs so that they could, the roundup would be easier. It's all been a setup. It's all been a game. You know, these, these fallen Elohim, when they fell in the beginning, they crying to Enoch, man, tell the Lord we sorry, man. The most I say, hell no, I don't want to hear that. And so they mad because the most High didn't want to hear it. Because you already knew what you were supposed to do. They were supposed to teach us righteousness. The most I say, let us make man in our image. He was talking to his Elohim. They were supposed to teach us righteousness, but they didn't want to serve us. They thought they were better than us. These fallen angels. Why well, I gotta serve them? I was I was uh, we, we helped make we was the, we was the one you said let us make man. Why we gotta serve them for? It's real. <laughs> the church has has made us think that sci-fi is not reality when it is. Like you know they. Giving us this fairy tale story. Oh, somebody died for your sins, but you can look around and tell that we still in hell. How did somebody die for my sins to make things better for me? It's a lie. You're going to die for your own sins. Come to Belize. We're here waiting. The Most High is here. His spirit is here. I show you videos and pictures of. Something that looks like the sun, but it's not the sun. The sun don't look like that. The most high be all up in my business. like, And the camera is the only thing that can pick it up for you to see. But I feel his presence all the time. But he's been showing himself to you guys. Shalom.